ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله indeed the most truthful of speech and the best of words are the words and the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa khayru al-hadi hadi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the best guidance we have is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharru al-umuri muhdathatuha and the worst of affairs are those things when you invent into this religion of ours wa kullu muhdathatin bid'ah everything when you invent into this deen of ours is an innovation wa kullu bid'atin dalalah and every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray. Every going astray, every misguidance is in the hellfire. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah says, In the Quran, Yahdi Lilati Hiya Aqwam, Wa Yubashir al Mu'minin al Ladina Yamaroon al Salihati and the Lahum Ajran Kabira. Allah says, What means? Verily, this Quran guides to that which is most just and most right. And gives glad tidings to the believers, the believers of Tawheed, the one who uphold worshiping Allah alone without partners, and obeying His Messenger Muhammad وسلم, and those who work deeds of righteousness, that they shall have a great reward. So all of the answers we need outside of Ramadan and in Ramadan is from this Quran, the guidance from it. Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he reported that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, أَكْثَرُ خَطَايَ بْنَ آدَمْ فِي لِسَانِهِ He said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, most of the sins of the children of Adam are because of their tongues. And Ibn Mas'ud رضي الله عنه, he said, يَا لِسَان قُلْ خَيْرًا تَغْنَمْ وَاسْكُتْ عَنْ شَرٍ تَسْلَمْ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ تَنْدَمْ This hadith which is in the collection of the Tabarani, Shaykh al-Albani, he authenticated it. Ibn Mas'ud, he continued after that narration of the Prophet Sallallahu to say to himself, O tongue, addressing his tongue, reprimanding himself, O tongue, speak goodness, you'll be rewarded for it. Remain silent, you'll be safe, lest you become regretful, lest you say something that you regret for the rest of your life, above the ground and after you're under the ground. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, this Qur'an guides us on many instructions in the Qur'an on how to speak, how to say things to other people, how to behave with others, and to guard our tongues and to speak that which is correct, to speak what is correct and what is truthful. And this encompasses many matters, so let us analyze these with the reminders from Allah. Allah, He commands us to speak kindly. When you speak to people, speak in a kind manner. Be merciful, show kindness, speak with a smile. Allah Azza wa Jalla, He says, وَإِذَا حَضَرَ الْقِسْمَةَ أُولِ الْقُرْبَ وَالْيَتَامَ وَالْمَسَاكِينَ فَرْزُقُوهُمْ مِنْهُ وَقُولُ لَهُمْ قَوْلًا مَعْرُوفًا Allah says in Surah Al-Nisa, what means? And when the relatives and the orphans and the masakeen, the poor, are present at the time of division of giving them help, give them out their property, and speak to them words of kindness and justice. Kindness should be the norm, a normal trait, an easy trait for the Muslim in terms of their mu'amalat, their conversations, their interactions with the other people. An Aisha radiallahu anha, the wife of the Prophet and the mother of the believers, may Allah be pleased with her. She said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Rawah Muslim. Aisha radiallahu anha, she narrated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, kindness is not a part of something except that it beautifies it. 
When kindness is a part of something, it will make it more appealing, more beautiful, more accepting. And harshness, <clears throat> and harshness is not a part of something except that it makes it defective. Whenever kindness is withdrawn, it makes it defective. It makes it worse. Kindness in the way we speak is a characteristic of a Muslim. So be kind when you speak. Speaking politely, this is another yani, version of it. You speak kindly, you're speaking with kind words, speaking politely, you're showing your mannerisms. You're showing your akhlaq, your manners, your character. Allah says, Allah says what means, and say to my slaves, to the true believers in Tawheed, that they should only say the words which are the best. Only speak words which are the best of words. Only speak words which have kindness with them, have sincere advice with them, have care and concern with them. Because shaitan, verily, he sows disagreements between you. Shaitan is looking for you to get into battles. He's looking for you to get into arguments. He's looking for you to get into discord with one another. Because when you do, then he really ramps things up. And then the ayah ends, surely shaitan, Satan, is to you a plain and an open enemy. Speaking truthfully, and we can't mention this enough, especially with some of the youth who mention things coming and mentioning their own selves, being used to lying and how they can stop it. <coughs> Alhamdulillah for those youth who care for that concern, that many just lie, speak without truth, speak with falsehood, and have no care or no concern. Allah, He says, وَلَا تَقْرَبُ مَالَ الْيَتِيمِ إِلَّا بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنِ حَتَّى يَبْلُغَ أَشُدَّهِ وَأَوْفُ الْكَيْلَ وَالْمِيزَانَ بِالْقِسْتِ لَا نُكَلِّفُ نَفْسًا إِلَّا وُسْعَهَا وَإِذَا قُلْتُمْ فَدْعِلُ وَإِذَا قُلْتُمْ فَعْدِلُوا وَلَوْ كَانَ ذَا قُرْبَى وَبِعَهْدِ اللَّهِ أَوْفُوا ذَلِكُمْ وَصَّاكُمْ بِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَذَكَّرُونَ Allah says what means, and do not come near the orphan's property except to improve it until he or she attains an age of full strength and then give them full measure and full weight with justice. We burden not any person more than they can bear. And whenever you give your word, whenever you give your word, your promise, Whenever you judge between people, whenever you're giving evidence to why something happened or didn't happen, why someone is in the right or someone is in the wrong, say the truth, even if it's a near relative. Always speak the truth. Never lie, even if it means you will be harmed or you will be fined or you will be in some way يعني, held to some account. Always speak the truth, even if it's a near relative and fulfill the covenant of Allah. This He commands you that you may remember. Speaking the truth is a characteristic of the Muslim. Always speak the truth. We'll see even more ayat referring back to being truthful, being just, even if it's against yourself. And Abdullah, he narrated that the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Alaykum the sidq. Upon you is to be truthful. فَإِنَّ السِّدْقِ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْبِرْ وَإِنَّ الْبِرْ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ Why? Because truthfulness leads to dutifulness, leads you to be dutiful and to be good. And dutifulness and goodness leads to paradise. وَإِنَّ الرَّجُلْ يَصْدُقُ حَتَّى يَكْتَبَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ صِدِّيقًا And a person will continue to tell the truth. Even if it brings him some harm or dislike, he will continue to tell the truth until Allah writes him down as a صِدِّيقًا As a person who tells the truth. وَإِيَّاكُمْ بِالْكَذِبِ وَالْكَذِبِ فَإِنَّ الْكَذِبِ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْفَجُورِ وَإِنَّ الْفَجُورِ يَهْدِي وَالْفَجُورِ يَهْدِي إِلَى النَّارِ وَإِنَّ الرَّجُلْ لِيَكْذُبْ حَتَّى يُكْتَبَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ كَذَّابًا And be aware, beware of lying. Do not do it. Stay very far away from it. Tell the truth. Because lying leads to deviance. And deviance will lead you to the hellfire. And a man or a person, a woman, male or female, will continue to lie and lie and lie until they're written with Allah as a kathab, as a liar. And what a way to meet our Creator who's blessed us with so much as to be written down as a liar in this life because you only lie to advance yourself or to cover up some, something wrong that you did. Speak what is the truth. Deal with the consequences on this earth before you deal with the punishment of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Speak good words. This is a command which is written upon the Muslims. And Allah commands us with it in the Qur'an. وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَا مِثَاقَ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ لَا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا اللَّهِ 
ولا تعبدون إلا الله وبالوالدين إحسانا وذي القربة واليتامى والمساكين وقولوا للناس حسنا وأقيموا الصلاة وآتوا الزكاة ثم توليتم إلا قليلا منكم وأنتم معرضون Allah says what means and remember when we took the covenant with Bani Israel with the children of Israel the children of Yaqub telling them and saying to them worship none but Allah alone only worship Allah alone without any partners and be dutiful and good to your parents and to your kindred, your family members, and to the orphans, and to the masakeen, to the poor ones, <clears throat> and speak good to the people. This was a command from Allah, to speak to the people in good ways. Speak to them with goodness, showing your tawheed, showing your belief in the oneness of Allah with respect to worshiping Him alone without partners, and the oneness of His Lordship and His names and His attributes. Speak to the people with goodness, with Tawheed, inviting them to Ma'roof, and joining upon them righteousness, forbidding evil. Say the truth about this deen. Say the truth about La ilaha illallah. Say the truth about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And perform the salah. Establish the salah. Doesn't mean just do it. You establish it, meaning in its time, with khushur, in its proper measure. And give the zakat. Then you slip back, except a few of you, while you are the backsliders. Do not fall into this deviance that Ben Israel fell into. We're commanded to worship Allah alone without any partners. And to be good to the parents and the kindred, the family members, the orphans, the masakeen, and to speak goodness. And to establish the prayer and give the zakat. This is from the etiquettes and the mannerisms of the Muslims. It was narrated from Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, who said that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, مَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِن بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَلْيَقُلْ خَيْرًا أَوْ لِيَسْكُتْ وَفِي الرواية أَوْ لِيَسْمُتْ رواه ابن ماجه وهذا حديث صحيح The Prophet وسلم, said, whoever believes in Allah on the last day. So when we hear these ahadith that begin in such a manner, if you consider yourself as one, or you want to be from the mu'mineen, the believers, if you believe in Allah truly, and you believe in the last day, the meeting with Allah, the reckoning, the judgment, the weighing of the deeds, if you believe in this, then you should follow what follows after that statement, which is, whoever believes in Allah on the last day, should speak which is good, say what is good, say what is correct, say what is truthful, or be silent. You got nothing to say, close your mouth. And it takes training, but once you train yourself to do it, you'll see that peace will come to you. You'll have less problems with the people. Instead of always relaying the facade, the corruption, or the, the things you might be seeing, and spreading tales, and maybe falsely relating something you think you saw, that maybe you're incorrect with what you saw. Implement this hadith. Say what is good or be silent. Don't speak. Sometimes people try to think, oh, you're being quiet now, huh? They try to pin it on you like it's a weakness. No, it's strength when you hold back your tongue. It's strength when you hold back your tongue from insulting somebody else or spreading false tales or lies. Speak with justice. Another command in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, taqullah wa qulu qawlan sadida. And every khutbah al haja, when the Prophet ﷺ would introduce his speeches, and he would read this ayah. Oh, you who believe, again, you hear that ayah, you want to be from the Mu'tineen, you should be all ears. Oh, you who believe, oh, you believe, keep your duty to Allah. Have taqwa, fear Allah. Put your, between yourself and Allah's punishment a barrier by your obedience to Allah and to His Messenger Oh, you who believe, keep your duty to Allah and fear Him, and always speak the truth. وَقُولُ قَوْلًا سَدِيدًا Always speak the truth. It's not worth it to lie. You're not going to get benefit. It will bring you more harm. And if not in this dunya, then definitely on the day of resurrection or in your grave even before that. Always speak the truth. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُونُوا قَوَّمِينَ بِالْقِسْتِ شُهَدَاءِ لِلَّهِ وَلَوْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَوْ الْوَالِدَيْنِ وَالْأَقْرَبِينَ إِنْ يَقُنْ غَنِيًّا أَوْ يَتِيمًا إِنْ يَقُنْ غَنِيًّا أَوْ فَقِيرًا فَاللَّهُ أَوْلَى بِهِمَا وَلَا تَتَّبِعُ الْهَوَىٰ أَن تَعْدِلُوا وَإِن تَلُوا أَوْ تُعْرِدُوا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ خَبِيرًا Allah says in Surah Al-Nisa, O oh, you who believe, again, a call out to the believers, stand out firmly for justice. The believers should always stand up for justice, always stand up for the truth, always stand up for what is right, as witnesses to Allah. 
Here's the catch. If you want to be from the believers, you do so even if it's against yourself. Even if it's against your parents. Even if it's against your family. Even if it's against a rich person. Even if it's against a poor person. Allah is a better protector to both than you. So follow not the lusts of your heart. Because if you follow the lusts of your heart, you're going to get into injustice. Follow not the lusts of your hearts, lest you may avoid justice. And if you distort your witness, or you refuse to give it, because you don't want to get your buddy in trouble, or your family member in trouble, or yourself in trouble, when you avoid justice, or you refuse to give it, verily Allah is ever well acquainted with what you do. Allah knows. And you can't hide it from Him. Brothers and sisters, no one should have a phone now. No one should be looking at a phone. No one should be talking. No one should be giving salams to the brother or the sister. The Prophet Sallallahu he made it clear, Man masal hasa faqad lafa. Whoever even plays with the stones in front of them, because they didn't have this nice carpet you guys are so comfortably sitting on. In a nice air-conditioned building, instead of the heat of Arabia. Whoever even plays with that, فَقَدْ لَهَا They've committed لَهُ Idle talk. And whoever did that, فَلَا جُمْعَةَ لَهُ They have no jum'ah for them. Other hadith mentioned, even if somebody gives you the salam, even if you tell somebody, be quiet, this is level. It ruins your jum'ah. These are not my words that I'm saying. These are the words of Allah and His Messenger Do not waste your jum'ah because of that stupid cell phone. Stand out firmly for justice. Avoid harsh words. Allah he says, له له Allah, he said, and now this was the command to Prophet Musa alayhi salam, and to Prophet Harun alayhi salam, to Prophet Moses and Aaron, to Fir'aun, the most evil of the people on the earth. This was what he told them. He said, and speak to Fir'aun. Speak to this evil, disgusting tyrant. To this man who will be from the worst punishments of the hellfire. Speak to him with gentle speech. That perhaps he may be reminded. That perhaps he may fear Allah. Speak to him mildly. Maybe he'll be admonished. Maybe he'll fear Allah. Maybe he'll turn his ways. And this was Fir'aun. And we have so many of us now so brave to talk against Yani, or to speak in harsh terms to those who are in authority over them, whether it's at work or wherever it may be. Avoid harsh words. This does not mean avoiding the truth. Especially when we constantly remind about it, there's times when things have to be said bluntly, as we just reminded ourselves with. <laughs> Brothers, if you can move forward, we didn't set up the tents because of the excessive heat today, so we want everybody to be able to pack up, uh, pack inside, inshallah. So brothers, move forward. Sisters, if in your hall there's a lot of uh, sisters there, move forward, fill in the earlier gaps, barakallahu feekum. There are some coolers with water outside when you're leaving Jum'ah. When you're leaving Jum'ah, barakallahu feekum. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the Quran is the guidance for all time, not just Ramadan. And we see this beautiful, these beautiful messages in the Quran. Speak kindly, speak justly, speak with the truth, speak politely, speak in good in, in good ways. Be understanding when you're talking to the people. Uphold truth, uphold justice and fairness. Because this is the way the Muslims were commanded to be. So if we want to be of them in respect to how Allah sees us, not with what we label ourselves with, then we better follow what's in this Qur'an. Remember that statement of Ibn Mas'ud, right? He told his tongue, you know, be aware. Say what is good, you'll be rewarded. Say what's good, you'll be rewarded. Don't speak, you'll be safe. Lest there comes a day when you regret it. 
So we need to be mindful of that. We keep, we keep these, these uh, yeah, these ahadith, these statements of the companions. They, they're not for, yeah, I mean, just to be set in a building. They're for us to let it penetrate our hearts so we can act upon it. Control that tongue. It's the greatest of the reasons of the sins of Bani Adam, of the children of Adam. Allah, He commands us to avoid false speech. Allah says, ذَلِكَ وَمَنْ يُعَدَّ مَحْرَمَاتِ اللَّهِ فَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَهُ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِ وَأُحِلَّتْ لَكُمُ الْأَنْعَامِ إِلَّا مَا يُتْلَى عَلَيْكُمْ فَاجْتَنِبُ الرِّجْسِ مِنَ الْأَوْثَانِ وَاجْتَنِبُ قَوْلَ الزُّورِ Allah says what means the manasik, the duties of hajj that were put on mankind by Allah, that they owe to Allah. And whoever honors the sacred things of Allah, then it is better for him with his Lord. And the cattle that are lawful to you, except those that will be mentioned to you as exceptions. So Allah, He said, so shun the abomination of worshiping idols. Any type of shirk should be rejected wholeheartedly, should be shunned to the utmost level. And shun lying speech. Shun, leave off, hate, distance yourself from statements that have lies. Avoid that false speech. And Abdullah ibn Amr radiallahu anhu, he mentioned that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Arba'un man kunna fihi kana munafiqan, wa in kanat khaslatun min hunna fihi, kanat fihi khaslatun min al-nifaq, hatta yada'aha, man ila hadda fakadab, wa ila wa'da akhlaf, wa ila, wa ila, خَاسَمَ فَجَرْ وَإِذَا عَاهَدَ غَدَرْ رواه الترمذي وهذا حديث صحيح The Prophet ﷺ, he said, there are four things. Whoever has them is a hypocrite. A pure hypocrite. If they have these four characteristics. And whoever has one attribute amongst them, then they have an attribute of nifaq, of hypocrisy, until they get rid of it. Until they get rid of it. And we did four or five khutb in a row about the signs of the munafiq, but these are the greatest ones. And the hadith points to them clearly and strictly. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, whoever lies, whenever he speaks, he does not fulfill, whoever does not fulfill his promises, whoever is vulgar when he argues, not that he argues, he becomes vulgar in it. And whenever he makes an agreement, he proves treacherous. He doesn't hold to his agreements. He deceives the people. These four things, if somebody does them all, they're a pure hypocrite. And if you do one of the three, two of the three, uh, one of the four, two of the four, three of the four, whatever, you have aspects of that nifaq until you get rid of them. These are warning signs. Why? Because Allah, He said, the munafiqeen, the hypocrites, they are the worst, deepest part of the hellfire. Worse than the kuffar. Worse than the disbelievers. And we, we, we don't take these things, ah, oh, it's a lie, it's a lie, it's a white lie, it's a small lie. No, a lie is a lie. There's no white lie or small lie in Islam. And we have seen time and time again, it begins as one, then it becomes two, then it becomes four, then it becomes 16, then it becomes 32, or whatever the, 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 however it carries out. It will only continue to keep you upon that line. So avoid false speech. Avoid excessive arguing. Allah, He says, وَلَا تُجَادِلُوا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ إِلَّا بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنُ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ ظَلُمُوا مِنْهُمْ وَقُولُوا آمَنَّ بِالَّذِي, بالذي أُنْزِلَ إِلَيْنَا وَأُنْزِلَ إِلَيْكُمْ وَإِلَاهُنَا وَإِلَاهُكُمْ وَاحِدٌ وَنَحْنُ لَهُ مُسْلِمُونَ Allah says what means, and argue not with the people of the scripture, with the Jews and the Christians. Don't argue with them, except in a way which is better. Always argue with good words. Always argue with good manners if you're going to argue. Don't get into the shouting that they get into. Don't get into the cursing or the insulting or the making fun of that they get into. It's not worth it. They're not worth it to you. You're upon Tawheed. You're a person who worships Allah alone without partners. Allah has blessed you with that ni'mah, with that barakah, with that favor. They're not. Do not waste disobeying the, do, do, do not disobey Allah just to يعني, argue with them or to get into some speech with them. Except with such of them as do wrong and say to them, we believe in that which has been revealed to us and that which has been revealed to you. That your Lord and our Lord is one and we have submitted to Him as Muslims. This is what we are to say. Do not argue with the people except in a way which is better. Avoid that excessive arguing. And Abi Umama radiallahu anhu qala, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
ببيت في ربط في ربط الجنة لمن ترك المراعة وإن كان محقا وببيت في وسط الجنة لمن ترك الكذب وإن كان مازحا وببيت في أعلى الجنة لمن حسن خلقه This hadith which is in the Sunnah of Abu Dawood, Sheikh Al-Bani, Hassanahu, he graded it as Hassan, as acceptable. The Prophet ﷺ said, I guarantee a house on the outskirts of Jannah for the one who avoids arguing and quarreling and fighting even when they're in the right. You know you're right. You know you have the validity to argue, but you avoid the argument for Allah's sake, you're guaranteeing a house on the outskirts of Jannah. And I guarantee a house in the middle of Jannah for the one who leaves off lying, even if it's to joke around. And sometimes we go, I'm just joking. We make a lie to tell a joke, right? But the one who leaves this off just to stay away from lying in every form whatsoever, even when you're going to reveal it was a lie because it was a joke. The one who stays away from the, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi guaranteed this person a house in the middle of Jannah. And I guarantee a house in the highest part, the upper part of Jannah for the one who has good character and good manners. All of this comes back to how we speak. Leaving off quarreling and arguing. Leaving off lying even if you're joking. Having good manners and good character. All of this comes back to speaking with the people in a good manner. And the last one we'll mention. Do what you said or what you've promised. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu lima taquluna ma la taf'aloon. Allah says what means, O you who believe, why do you say that which you do not do? And this is a common thing. And unfortunately, sometimes many of the children, they attribute this to the parents. Because of their parents, and inshallah we'll do this tomorrow, and the parent has no intent of doing that thing. So what have you taught them? Except that you're not going to do what you say, or what you promise. O you who believe, why do you say that which you do not do? If you're going to say it, you do it. Now this is, yeah, I mean, you advise someone to do good, even if you're not upon that good, this is different. But when you're commanding or you're t- telling the people you will do something and you don't do it, then you have fallen into that trap. Abu Hurairah, he narrates that the Messenger of Allah, وسلم, he said, and this is another hadith about ayat al-munafiq. Although it mentions some of the ones, this one mentions three signs. Ayat al-munafiq thalafun, idha haddatha kadab, wa idha wa'ada akhlaf, wa idha tumina khan. The signs of the hypocrite are three. Whenever he speaks, he lies. So the producer has become a liar. Whenever he promises, he breaks his promise. I promise you, I won't tell anyone. You go tell someone within two minutes. I promise you, I'll do this when you leave. I promise you, I'll take out the trash. I promise you, I'll wash your car. I promise you, I'll, I'll go get this for you. And you don't do it. You break your promise. Be mindful of that word. When you say, I promise, you better believe, you better hold yourself to account. With Tumana Khan, and when he is entrusted, he betrays his trust. Trust me, you can tell me, no worries. And then you go and you betray that person's trust. In another narration, the Prophet ﷺ listened to what he added. وَإِنْ صَامَ وَصَلَّ وَزَعْمَ أَنَّهُ مُسْلِمٌ In another narration, this is in Sahih al-Bukhari. In another narration, the Prophet ﷺ, he added to this, even if he fasts, even if he prays, even if he considers himself a Muslim. You can consider yourself a Muslim. You can pray 70 prayers a day. You can fast every day of your life. But if you lie when you speak, if you break your promises, if you betray your trusts, then all of those actions won't be of any avail to you. Wallahu a'lam. Allah says, وَأَوْفُوا بِعَهْدِ اللَّهِ إِذَا عَاهَدْتُمْ وَلَا تَنْقُدُوا الْأَيْمَانَ بَعْدَ تَوْكِيدِهَا وَقَدْ جَعَلْتُمْ اللَّهَ عَلَيْكُمْ كَفِيلًا إِنَّ اللَّهَ Allah says what means and fulfill the covenant of Allah. The bay'ah, the pledge of Islam. When you have covenanted and break not the oaths after you have confirmed them. And indeed you have appointed, appointed Allah your surety. When you make that promise, when you give that trust, when you speak, when you do any of those things, you have appointed Allah the surety that you are telling the truth. That you will keep that promise, that you will keep your oath, that you will keep your covenant. Verily, Allah knows what you do. So in summary, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, follow the commands of the Qur'an and the Sunnah so that you may be successful. And look at all of those ways that were reviewed on how to speak and what to avoid of speech. Speak kindly, speak politely, speak truthfully, speak good words and speak with justice. And avoid harsh words, avoid false speech, avoid arguing excessively 
and do what you say and do what you promise. And inshallah, you'll be of those who are successful yawm al qiyamah. Allahumma ameen. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, a few quick announcements, barakallahu alaykum. There are some igloos to the right and the left when you exit the doors for the sisters. It'll be to your right when you exit the doors of the sisters' hall with some water bottles for the hot day, barakallahu alaykum. So you can take them, inshallah, after the salah on your way out. This Monday, July 8th, there will be a blood drive that the Red Cross is hosting here. There is a flyer that went out on WhatsApp. You can call the number and schedule to uh, donate blood. Barakallahu alaykum. Sunday, July 14th, there's a CPR class. It is free. You're not going to get a certificate that you can take to your job or what it may be, but it will teach you CPR. And this is a handy tool for us to have for our families, for our friends, for the gatherings we go to, for the masajid, just to learn the basics of CPR, necessitation, etc. So attend that class. There will be refreshments provided. It's at 8.30 a.m. that Sunday. Again, you can sign up. We'll be sending out a link for you to, or the link is there for you to sign up. You just click on it in the message that was sent on WhatsApp as well and sign up. Sunday, July 21st, we're back to the freeway cleanup now that the construction has finished of the McKinley exit. So we have to get back into doing that every two months. So that will be Sunday, July 21st. Early in the morning, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m., you'll go over some safety here at the masjid, then go out to the freeway to clean those up. If you need community service hours and you're over the age of 16, you can sign up, inshallah, and we can give you that as for your schools. Sunday, July 28th, we'll have a living Islam. Now we're getting into the topic of salah. The last ones have been attended very heavily on how to make wudu, ghusl, tayammum. And people who thought they knew it all learned many things that were new. Please attend these. They're beneficial. We have refreshments. Some of the kids come. It's a very nice time. It's in the morning time from 10 to 11 a.m. And the halaqahs will resume after Maghrib Salah on Sundays starting on July 28th, insha'Allah. اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الاحياء منهم والاموات انك انت سميع مجيب قريب الدعوات قريب مجيب الدعوات يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين وانصرنا على اعدائك وعداء الدين اللهم انصر اخواننا واخواتنا في فلسطين وفي كل مكان اللهم ثبت اقدامهم وثبت قلوبهم اللهم ثبت قلوبهم وارحم موتاهم واشف مرضاهم وتقبل شهداءهم يا ارحم الراحمين سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين